excited for Civil War. Civil War, man. Man, it's crazy. Alex Garland directed this film. It's a Marvel film. I mean, like, look at this. Look, Doctor Strange sneak preview, man. I didn't know he did this. Ex Machina. Civil, uh, Civil War. Yeah. The new A24 movie. Oh, this was made by A24? No, it says Marvel. No, it. bro. You think I want to do Marvel reviews? Well, uh, let's go to the theater, man. Oh, shit. It's in theaters. Fuck. <laughs> Welcome back to the Real Talk Podcast, episode 134. I'm your host, Nathan, and I'm joined by the man himself, Matthew Neves. To my left. Thank you, thank you. And today, we are going to be reviewing Adam Garland's latest film, nope. Civil War. It's Alex Garland. Alex Garland, Jesus Christ. It's because of Adam Wingard for King Kong, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dog, they all have the anyway, same fucking names. Fucked up in the first minute of the episode. All Let's good, go. all good. All um, good. <laughs> anyway, Alex Garland's film. Yes, yeah, Civil War. Civil War. This movie. Uh, look, before we get into the film. Yes. You know we got the Patreon going Oh, on. yeah. You know oh, we got yeah. the YouTube memberships going on. Mm-hmm. We got a cool show called Movie of the Month over there where the audience votes on what the movie of the month is going to be mm-hmm. and Nevs and I discuss it. Uh, yeah. I heard we got a Phantom Menace episode coming out soon. Yeah, we do. So check us out over there. You also get early access to our podcast episodes. If you like what we're doing at Real Talk and you want to support, that's the best way to do it. Hell yeah. Let's get into Civil War. Oh, yeah. A24's biggest budget film. Yeah, 50 million. That's a... Uh... Might not seem like a lot for these these big boy studios sure, like for, Warner Brothers Universal. That's right. But in terms of A twenty four, an independent film company, it's pretty fucking big. It's huge. It's a big risk for them. Yeah, and coming from Alex Garland, you know, he directed Ex Machina, uh, Annihilation, and uh, the movie Men. I don't know if anybody remembers that film. Didn't see that one. I know two and a half people that saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Might have been the, 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 the half was out. the one that wasn't a huge fan of the movie. But still, it, it, it came out. And uh, now his latest film, Civil War, uh, supposedly he said in various interviews that this is his last uh, directing film. But I don't know. I don't know. He said it because he's not he's not into directing that much. I, I hate to hear that, honestly. Yeah. Um, Ex Machina is a film that blew me away when I first oh, yeah. saw it. What year did that film come out? Uh, 2014? Yeah. I, I want to say 2014. I saw it around then. Yeah. And it's one of those movies that like shaped my love for film. Mm-hmm. Truly. Uh, I really did, was blown away with, by that movie. And I think that movie like now that, you know, uh, everybody's talking about AI and shit. Yeah. It, it's, that film has aged like fine wine and yeah. only becomes more relevant and shows how ahead of its time it was. Yeah, I mean, you compare it to, like, the creator on how it handles AI, and I feel like Ex Machina, at least, even if you like the creator, Ex Machina handled that concept a little bit more professionally. Completely. From a narrative perspective. Uh, From a technological, I think they're on par, but that's how I kind of viewed it, and the movie Annihilation, I mean, god damn, that was a good fucking movie, man. That cast was awesome. I think that's one I didn't see. Oh my gosh, it stars, like, Natalie Portman, uh, a few other actresses, and they all go in, like, the forest area to find, like, uh, what's happening. And so I think it's um, Natalie Portman's husband, played by Oscar Isaac, that they're trying to look for, and they find something a lot more disturbing, a lot more creepy. Oh, so Oscar Isaac's in that one, too. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. It, but it, it's mainly Natalie Portman. Uh, she's the main character, and we follow her as well as her uh, crew, her team. And you get to see it, it's it's one of those like horror sci fi films that fucking works. It reminds me of Alien, just in a different form. And I would I would highly recommend Annihilation, uh, and as well as Ex Machina. So yeah, yeah please don't stop directing. Uh, I think he's just <laughs> saying reconsider, that. please. I think he's just saying that, but it's gonna be like a Tarantino thing. Where it's like it's gonna be my tenth film. It's yeah. like all right, all right, Quinn, uh, you're gonna come back. I give you five years, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I I hope so. Yeah. But let's get into Civil War. Yes, Civil War. Um, I saw this in IMAX. It's a, haven't seen a movie in IMAX in a long fucking time. Yeah, so. and it's cool that it's an A twenty four movie, right? That saw in IMAX. Oh, that man. is that is interesting. And I hope A twenty four, you know, does a combination of bigger budget films and continues on the path that they, you know, became famous for mm-hmm. as well with like some smaller budget. Yeah, giving giving newer directors a chance, that kind of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. but I definitely see the appeal for A twenty four to to break into like a bigger, 
box office audience, right. right? And I think this was their attempt with Civil War. Yeah. Especially with a concept like this that I think has a lot of worldwide appeal. Yeah. Especially the year it's coming out is obviously an election year in the United yep. States. And and I think that that's where the problem lies with this film mm. is audience expectation. Yes, because the trailers make it look like the most epic action movie ever with a little bit of political taste the, to the it. The political commentary yes. aspect is what I think everybody expects from a film like this. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's going to be an exaggerated or it's going to be like a metaphor for what could happen in the United States now. Right? Yeah. And that's not what this film is. This no. film follows a group of war photographers. Yes. Um Led by Kirsten Dunst. Led by Kirsten Dunst, which yes. I was very happy to see. I've yeah. always been a fan of Kirsten Dunst since mm -hmm. 2001. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ever ever since uh, she played Mary Jane. That's right. Yeah, that's but... right. That's my Mary Jane. Hell, yeah. <laughs> um, so I was happy to see her get the, the leading role here. Yeah. I think she does an amazing job as mm -hmm. this like veteran, jaded, like broken war photographer who mm -hmm. kind of feels no ways about anything anymore. It's just kind yeah. of going through her life. Uh, and, and that's the premise. There's a civil war breaking out, yeah. and they are there to photograph it. They're trying... It's kind of a road trip film. They're trying to get to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. to photograph the president. Um, played by Nick Offerman. Played by Nick Offerman. Which I feel like... Part of me thinks Alex Garland was watching uh, some Parks and Rec. It's a little bit of a meme, isn't and, it? Yeah, he was watching Parks and Rec, and he's like, oh, this Ron Swanson guy. You know what he should be? He should be the fucking president. I'm like, you know what? Sure. He's huh. in it for a little bit. He's, he's not He's not the main focus, just so barely you know. in it. Yeah. He has a, a very few lines. Yes. But yeah, they're making their way to Washington because a group of, um, I don't know what they're called, uh... Like uh, soldiers? Or? Yeah, a group of like rebels, I guess, right, are, are right. making their way to Washington yeah. to kill the president. Yeah. And they're trying to get the exclusive story. Mm -hmm. That's the premise of the film. Yeah. But it doesn't it doesn't take political sides. No. Which I think is a big criticism I'm seeing online. Like this film is empty. It doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. My stance on it is why does it have to? Yeah. My he, here's my thing. We're watching it unfold through the eyes of war photographers. Yes. What is the job of a war photographer? It's not to write the headlines of the war. Yep. It's to actually take pictures and depict what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. They're neutral. Yeah. And that's the stance that the film takes. Oh, yeah. Like it or not, maybe you came in with some expectations of, oh, it's going to be this this great political commentary. I'm not a huge fan of political when films try to do heavy political commentary right i think a lot of times they just try to hit you over the head with it and it's fucking annoying oh yeah i know the more uh, uh, don't look up always comes to mind as an example of uh in a comedic sense yeah. them trying to do it and if you don't find the movie funny if you don't find the characters interesting there is literally nothing for you to to you know uh, to watch that you give a shit about that's you know? right you're not getting the political commentary here but to me this is like a super tense war drama yeah. that succeeded in building tension and holding my attention throughout. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I, I took the film as, and I thought it was very good at that specifically. Yeah. The tension that this film builds as you get closer to Washington is really effective. Yeah. In the end, maybe they don't do too much with that tension that was building up the whole time, <laughs> but I was engaged through the whole film. Yeah. I, I can understand that. I'm a little confused, too, about everyone saying, like, oh, it didn't pick a side or stuff like that, because I did read a couple yeah, there's a lot reviews of that. like that. Um, even though this film fucking spells it out every five minutes what this movie's trying to be. Like, I swear to God, Kirsten Dunn said this line a million times, like, we're war photographers. We're neutral. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> they fucking tell you like 50 bajillion that's times. Right. And and that's the thing with Alex Garland in this particular film. He's not subtle. No. Like this is the most obvious type of movie that you're trying to go for when it comes to being neutral. Yeah. If there's any stance, it's just war is bad is the stance. Yeah. Because there's well, fucked up. They show fucked up people on both sides. Yeah. The president's a little fucked up. Yep. The people trying to kill him are turning into sav Everybody's turning into savages in the Civil War time. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, if you want to get a message from it, it's that war is fucked up. Anti-war, which <laughs> yeah. 
guess what? Most war films are. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. I don't think Platoon or Apocalypse <laughs> Now endorse that, That's I, right. I think. That's right. <laughs> Which I think Alex Garland compared this movie to, like, somewhat of an Apocalypse Now or... Uh, I never saw the movie Come and See yet. I heard I that was a really that. good one, too. But that's also anti-war. Yeah. Um, do I think that this particular film is compared to Apocalypse Now? No, I, I don't. And, and the reason no. why is because... With movies like that, with anti-war films or movies that have similar subject matters, I have to be somewhat invested in the characters and not feel bored when I try to think about what their character arcs are. Sure. In this case, I love all the performances. I love Kirsten Dunst. I love the little girl who's in it who looks like she's 12 years old, like uh, the the young up-and-coming photographer, right? Yeah. Like, I, I, they were like, oh, she's 23. I was like, what the fuck? You look like 10 years old. What the hell? But anyways, like, she's Did the- Did they up- say she was 23 in the film? Yeah, like, it was a, lo- it was a quick little dialogue because remember the actor who was, um, oh, what's his name? One from Narcos. Yeah, the, the, that the guy. Mustache. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He know, was like, yeah, I brought her in. No, she's like 23. It's all good. Like, she says that offhand line, and I heard that. I was like, what? But anyways, all the performances are really fucking solid. But to me, the character moments felt very cliche at times. Because yeah. you said Kirsten Dunst's character. She's like the up. She's like the older photographer. She has experience. But the dialogue they give her. Sounds like, oh, you're not from around here. You can't handle this. You can't handle this war life, little kid. Yeah. You can't do anything. I'm just like, okay, I've seen this done from like an older character. Yeah. So many times. And it's like even the actor from Narcos, him, he's like moments like, well, I'm the chill guy. Don't worry. You'll be fine. No, war's cool. Like you can take pictures and stuff like that. And it's like, you sound so overconfident. I'm pretty sure you're going to like break down or something when this one's something. Oh, you broke down. Okay, cool. (laughs) It's like when war actually affects you. And it's like, that's what I mean. It's like because of these cliches from these character moments, the movie starts to feel too obvious for me. Sure. Too obvious, and I'm just like, all right, I'm just waiting until the next scene comes in. And that's probably my biggest issue with this movie is that there were a few moments like that. I definitely agree that there's a ton of cliche here, especially when the, in, a, in some of the character scenes. Yeah. Like, uh, I wasn't a huge fan of, like, the they tried to do a little ensemble fun cast situation, you know? Yeah the scenes of them in the car and and she's like yeah she's getting this is journalism you know if you're not cut out for it and this like they're trying to pr- pretend that there's i didn't some take the picture there. that's right oh <laughs> yeah and i and, and then coming from alex garland because you know like directors have this mindset of the camera you know yeah. the camera's taking capturing this moment it's capturing this moment whether it's horrific whether it's all these emotions and of course, he's going to utilize that within this film from a photojournalist perspective. Do I think it's interesting? Yes and no. I feel like what he does with it kind of works, but you got to do more with it. You can't just be like, all right, take the picture, black and white, boom. Sure. It's like, okay, but what else are you doing with this? Because this, this isn't something new. Like, we've know, we know how this works. I, I just feel like... I feel like you have to add more. Sure. I, the premise is cool. Uh, yeah. Showing a civil war through the eyes of a war photographer is a very cool premise, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I, I fully agree with that. I mean, like um, movies that Oliver Stone has done, for example, like Platoon, like Salvador, like Born on the Fourth of July, they comment on anti-war in that matter. And although those films are definitely not neutral, you can definitely sense the side that he's choosing in that regard politically speaking i feel like those movies still have more of an interesting angle to them because you're more invested in the characters you give a shit about like charlie sheen's character within platoon you give a shit about tom cruise and this one i can't say i cared enough i because they mention it's like oh i'm from here i'm from there i'm from you know i'm just trying to trying to speak the truth i'm trying to capture the moment you know it's just yeah, but is there more to it? They don't touch on backstories too much. Yeah. They don't they don't touch on backstories too much or even give you much reason why the war is happening at all. Which I'm fine with. I'm fine with that. Right. So yeah, yeah. But I think that they give you like a couple of lines like about how like, you know, the president is in his third term. Yeah. And well, how they disband the FBI. But yeah. you really don't know why things are happening. And 
the characters feel a little bit shallow. Like they lack a little bit of yes. depth as well. That's my main issue is the characters give off that impression. Um, but performance wise, they're all great. I mean, my favorite was Stephen McKinley Henderson. Yeah. I want to, I want to shout this guy out cause he is a great character actor. He was in Dune. They cut my boy out of Dune too, he man. Cut, what the he, fuck? I know. Fucking bullshit, man. I actually liked it. He was a cool character in Dune one. He had the fucking weird eyes and yeah. shit. Yeah. Um, but why did they cut him out of Dune 2? I don't know. I want to see his cut. Danny but. Villeneuve. He probably said it somewhere. He's like, oh, we just didn't have time. Yeah. And I think even Alex Garland was pissed off. He's like, my boy, you took him out of Dune. That's fucking bullshit. No, he was great in this film. Yeah. He offers the most emotional moment in the entire film. Yeah. When he's dying. I think mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a quite sad sequence. And then Kirsten Dunst is like, you know, cleaning the car of his blood. Yeah. And I thought that was very like, oh, wow, this is real. Yeah. What did you think of the music? Because there were moments in this film where in the trailer, they had sound of like the helicopter flying, the gunshots and stuff. But then when you watch the movie, they don't put those sound effects in. They just put the music in, a particular song. What did you think of that? Uh, The sound design of this film is a huge standout. That's my favorite part. It's a huge standout. The music, I I don't know... It's very mixed. It's very mixed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It wasn't like something I loved or hated. I'm, I'm kind of neutral on that. Yeah. But the way they used the bullets sound effects. Oh, like, so good. Why isn't every scene that, ha- why isn't every movie that have guns <laughs> doing it like this? I mean, I don't know if I'm biased because I saw this in IMAX, but when those gunshots were firing, Bro, I'm I my felt pants. it. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially like, when it would go from a quiet scene and then a bullet goes off. Yeah, man. Like, oh, shit. What oh, the hell just happened? It's great. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. I, I thought mean, the sound design was was a huge standout. Everybody was jumping in my theater. Like you could feel yeah. everyone was like, whoa, fuck. It 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 made the climax work even more so because yeah. you're established with the sound effects and you're just like, okay, it's all coming together. This is what it feels like. You feel like you're in a war zone. Yeah. It it did a great job of building the tension. And I, I find that really impressive considering the budget, you know. I mean, with fifty million dollars, this feels more real than a lot of, I guess, Michael Bay-esque type of action people would associate with. Oh, it's going to be just firework explosions. It's like, no, this is... No, it's not that. It's a lot more grounded than that, which I got to give credit to because of the sound design, because of the uh, VFX and everything like that. Um, Am I the only one who thought Jesse Plemons was like a char- a prominent character in this fucking movie? <laughs> Like, do you want when to, I watch the trailer? Yeah. I felt like all the pictures I would see about this was him in the red glasses. Yeah. So I thought he was like an antagonist of this film. And he's in a five minutes. He's scene. a glorified camp. <laughs> yeah. He's a glorified. You want to know why he was in this film? Because they had a different actor in it, but uh, he, he left last minute. So Kirsten Dunst was like, well, maybe my husband can be in it. <laughs> and then he's like, hey, do you want to be in this? And he was like, sure. He had like no prep time. I mean, he fucking kills. Oh, him. he's amazing! But the fact that he had like no prep time, yeah, and he gives one of the best performances. This is a great, great performance from him. I but love it. Once again, Jesse Plemons. How is he not getting a leading role somewhere? It's gonna happen. It's, it's gonna, gonna, it's happen. gonna happen. happen. Everything, every performance he's in, he kills it. Yeah, Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh yeah, so fucking good in that movie. This little cameo, it's probably the most memorable, most fucked up scene. He's genuinely scary. Yeah. It's the it's the time where the tension is at its peak for me. Yeah. And, um, that scene, all those bodies are in the hole, mm-hmm. and you're like, you don't know who the fuck's going to die or live in that scene. You're like, whoa, what's and happening here? It's like little character moments like that that I wanted more of, because you notice how you mentioned the glasses. Somebody was like, I don't even think that's his glass. I think he took it from one of the bodies. Yeah. And you, the more you think of it that way, the more it's like, man, I fucking wish they did that with more of these characters. Because that's little moments. You don't write dialogue for that. You just describe it in the script. You sure. add the character. I, <laughs> the saddest reality is like, he's one of, he's more interesting because he's not that cliche. No. Like he's obvious in terms of antagonist, but he does something different but his behavior is like so erratic at, that you you know it's not predictable yeah he's not, not it's yelling not he's not swearing or anything like that he's very you know he's just like what part of america are you from yeah oh and that's that's yeah i love that and he goes one by one <laughs> and the tension is just building and you can tell it's like you don't know what the right answer is like yeah. they don't know what to say I love that scene. I thought that was a huge standout. I thought he was going to be in the movie more. I was kind of disappointed that he wasn't. Yeah. But 
uh, that scene is definitely a standout scene in this film. Oh, absolutely. I, I fully agree with that. I mean, like you said before, with the action and the character moments, um, there are some odd things. Like, my least favorite scene in this film is when the little girl gets into the, the other car. You know that scene? Oh, man. I hate that scene. That to, scene was so dumb. They had to bring in the <laughs> dumbass Asian friends. Yeah, there's like, hey, what's up, man? I'm like, wait, who, who are these guys? And apparently the actor from Narcos is just like, oh, yeah, yeah, my friends. Oh, cool. Oh, they overheard you in that scene that never got shot because they wanted to say it afterwards, the reveal yeah, for the little girl and stuff. Right. So then the little girl jumps into the other car and I'm just like, why is she jumping in? You were fucking scared shitless like two minutes ago when you were in that gunfire sniper. Right. Like, did you guys learn nothing? <laughs> <laughs> fucking is there a civil war happening outside? Or and, the, and the saddest thing <laughs> is the only reason that scene exists is for the Jesse Plemons scene. Yeah. Which here's the thing. They had to, it's just like set up. Here's another trap. Here's another. Like, I wanted to see how Jesse Plemons and his friends interacted with them. I wanted that scene, but we never get it. It's True. all off screen. And that's, that's to me, those are wasted opportunities is when you focus on the dumb moments. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to see the interesting shit. Like, where's that tension coming from? Like Jesse Plemons, like get out of the car. And he has his gun pointed at the car and stuff, and he takes them out. But it's all calm and collective. I would have preferred that sequence, right? Because the I can sense it, the lack of music and just them walking to like where the bodies are. Oh, wouldn't that tension work even better than seeing it from like seeing a from distance? the far perspective? Yeah, which I would. get, I get, because they're photographers and Alex Garland, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's style choice. I know what you mean. I, I I know, and the style the style choices work sometimes, and sometimes they do it a disservice, in my opinion. That's that's very fair. Yeah, there's some scenes that I do like it. Uh, I do like the camera, you know, perspective. I think it works. Some of them, it's a disservice. You're 100% right. Yeah. I, I wanted it to build more tension for those scenes because when you build tension, you care more about these characters. You find out how they would react in these situations. You kind of get that towards the end yeah. when the soldiers and the photographers, they're all like huddled up and they're trying to get the president. You kind of get that impression. But I don't know. Like, I just... That ending. Hmm. What did you think of that ending? It left more to be it like to me. Like there was more to be desired. Like yeah. I wanted more. I, yeah. I wanted more. I guess it is like a little bit of a conclusion. Like you know, mm -hmm. spoiler alert. She, you know, Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst dies, dies yep. and the girl gets the picture. The girl gets the picture of her. Yeah, but I wanted more. It, it just felt like they did a great job of building the tension to this big thing and it didn't have the payoff that I wanted. Yeah, I agree. And I'm not saying you have to do a Michael Bay ending. That's not where we're coming off as. We're no, like, it didn't have to be, I didn't, I didn't want more explosions yeah, or gunfire that's not, in the ending. That's no. not what I wanted, but it just felt like, I don't know the way they caught the president and yeah. the way they, just killed them. Like, I felt like there could have been more tension in that scene. <laughs> that line delivery, too. It's like, is there anything you have to say? You know, a quote. And it's like, you know, please don't shoot me. It's like, look, that's good enough. I'm like, okay. Right. I felt like there was a moment for, like, the president to, like, say some shit. For the government to, like, say some meaningful shit in that moment. Maybe reflect on some of his mistakes. Or you know, it'd be a good contrast if he just genuinely said, "I'm sorry," and then they shoot him. Or, yeah, or go something. Wouldn't like, that be way better? Like yeah. I don't know. Like the if, quote, I'm, like the "I need a quote" was like cliche, cliche. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that character, he gets a little too dumb. His character is cliche because yeah, his character is very cliche because it's like I need that quote, I need that journalism, and it's just like he's asking the snipers what side they're on. Yeah, and I'm like. Wagner he's, he's, Wagner Mora that Wagner. is the guy from Narcos who's his name's Joel yeah. in the film. Great, great actor. His character though, I'm like, okay, you've been a photographer for how many fucking years? Like, yeah, try to read a room, you know? Like, I yeah. I can't comprehend that sniper scene. He was a little bit too dumb. I couldn't. Yeah, like <laughs> I did like I did like that scene though, and I, I guess, did too. And I guess he had to be dumb. Like, you know, the sniper gives the line like. Not even like, you know, he's like, what side are you on, right? And Good the sniper shit. just says, they're trying to kill me. I'm trying to kill them. Yeah. And, I, you know, that's a commentary of like, you know, when these war situations happen, you kind of just 
forget what you're even fighting about and you're just fighting. Like, oh yeah, it was an opportunity to give some commentary. It's uh, it's kind of like the Marlon Brando character in Apocalypse Now. You you have this character right. that. It's like, doesn't matter what side it is. It's all chaos. That's right. And it's like, yeah, I like those. I like those moments. And I wish they delved into the snipers, for example. I wish they delved into the snipers after they killed the guy, you know? But we can't because it's just the photographers. They're just going on their journey. Yeah, it's, we never even saw the guy, which I was like, yeah. right? I mean, I what, if, be a whole thing. what if that guy had secrets of his own and they took pictures of those secrets? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe he was part of some political party and they just took pictures of it. Again, very neutral, but this is who they are. Yeah. They capture these moments. And it felt like he wanted to choose specific ones, obviously, and yeah. gloss over others. And I, I don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll change my mind with this film, but in terms of tone and quality, this is nothing like Annihilation or Ex Machina. This feels like this feels like Alex Garland wanted to make something that was profound, and he wanted to illustrate that with his love for film by using war photographers. Yeah. That's what it comes off as. And I don't, I don't know if it works as well as he thinks. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think I liked it a little bit more than you. Um for me, I think he does it. It's 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 at times it's a master class of tension building. Yes, I think it's very good. Some of the stylistic choices with the war photography work. Some don't, like we talked about. Yeah. But I think overall the premise is very cool. I liked mm-hmm. it, and I was involved in the world, and there was scenes of genuine tension where I was like, you know, it kind of gave me that pit in my stomach feeling. Yeah. And when a film does that, it's always like it's always notable for me, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's not ex machina. It's no. not as deep or perfect. If you're looking for political commentary, you're not going to get it here. This is no. far from the film to watch for political commentary. Yeah. But if you're just looking to be taken on a ride and, uh, you like films with tension that give you that pit feeling of what's going to happen next or, or how are they going to get out of this? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this movie offers, offers that and does so pretty well. I think yeah. I, I would recommend watching this movie, especially in IMAX. It's a great experience, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, I think I want to see Alex Garland direct more. Same. I want to see Alex Garland direct more. I don't. I wouldn't say this is a misstep from him. It's just not as good as his strongest work. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, for me, if you are going to see this film and you're a big fan of Alex Garland, I don't know if Men was good. If you enjoyed Men, if you were one of the two people that saw it, you might enjoy Civil War as well. Yeah. Um, definitely watch it in IMAX. I feel like that utilizes the sound mixing the best. That's my favorite part was the sound mixing. My least favorite part was the wasted potential of having characters that didn't feel as cliche as they were in this movie. I feel like there's a lot of wasted potential because at the end of the day, this concept is interesting and I do care about it. And that's why I criticize little moments where there could have been more tension. And uh, for that... uh, Final rating? My final rating? Mm -hmm. uh, Four out of ten. Four out of ten. Two out of five. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give this one... I'm going to give this one a six out of ten. Mm-hmm. Six out of ten for sure. Three stars, I think, is fair for this one. Yeah. Uh, the tension was great. Kirsten Dunst, I think, killed it. In a, I, I want to see her in more. I haven't seen her in much lately. Definitely see a lot of her Sofia Coppola collabs. Right. She's been. I think she's in almost all of her. Yeah, films. she is in a lot of Sofia Coppola films. Yeah. I gotta go back and watch those because I, I think she's a great actress. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot to like here, but yeah. definitely some more to be desired. Mm-hmm. I would say. Check it out and uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Yes. We'll end it off there. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe to your boys, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Take care. Brush your hair. Peace.